so good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Sergi Pujadas, and I will be presenting the virtual caliper. So this work is a collaboration inside the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems and Max Planck Institute for Cybernetics. So the virtual caliper is a journal paper. The virtual caliper is a tool that empowers users to create an avatar by measuring themselves. It uses the ones of the HTC Vive in order to take precise 3D measurements of the body. The user is guided through a simple protocol with instructional videos, and the virtual avatar is then readily available for VR use. Here we show an application where the user can experience the created avatar in a mirror scenario. In light gray, you saw the avatar created based on the 3D scan, and in dark gray, the avatar created with the virtual caliper. In this demo, we used six sensors to track and animate the avatar in real time, and I would like to point out that the uh, problem of inverse kinematics is out of the scope of this paper. The virtual caliper focuses on the creation of a metrically accurate avatar. Several methods that create metrically accurate avatars rely on images, and maybe most of you here today would be okay to share such an image as long as the face is blurred. But we noticed that some people were reluctant to participate in studies where such images were taken. Thus, we ask ourselves, which information would the user prefer to share in order to create an avatar? We conducted an online study giving the following possibilities. Body measurements, pictures and videos with clothes, or pictures or videos in the minimal condition you just saw. The results showed a clear preference towards using body measurements. So from now on, and in the paper also, we say the term protect privacy in the sense that no images are required in the method. So with this study, we had our wish list for an ideal avatar creation tool. It should be fast, it should be precise, it should protect privacy in the sense that no images are required. Uh, it should be openly available to everybody, and it, also target, it should also target novel users. So we look at the state of the art, and we identified four groups of methods. Artistic approaches are openly available tools such as AXYZ Design, Mixamo, or Make Human. They can be used to create avatars. Their problem is that it's very, very hard to create a metrically accurate avatar even if precise dimensions of the uh, subjects are given. Anthropometric approaches require body measurements. These need to be performed according to protocols just, such as ANSUR or ISAAC. These protocols require around one week training, are costly and time consuming. <coughs> Thus, they are neither fast, freely available, nor targeted towards novice users. The literature in image-based approaches is pretty extensive. The methods compute the shape of a subject by using a single RGB image. Early methods, such as Valen and colleagues, used clicked anatomic points to create the shape of an avatar. Uh, recent methods, such as Lashner and colleagues, use anatomic points that are detected automatically with CNNs. Multiple methods also create avatars using one or multiple RGBD sensors such as uh, Tong and colleagues in 2012, Bogo and colleagues in 2015, or Shapiro and colleagues in 2017. While they are fast and create precise avatars, they do not protect privacy in the sense that images are required. In the technological approaches family, we find methods such as the pioneering work of Hilton and colleagues in 1999, uh, Malson and colleagues, the one-shot acquisition stage, or the Aschenbach paper, fast generation of realistic virtual humans. Maybe you had also the time to check the demo, Upstairs, which relies on an RGBD sensor to create an avatar. While these methods can be fast and accurate, they require images and are not really freely available or not targeted towards novice users. Most of the time, a, a technician is required in order to operate the system. So in order to fulfill our wish list, we created the virtual caliper. So the virtual caliper uh, uses the simple body model to create avatars. So I'll start by introducing very briefly the simple model. Simple has a template mesh, and then, as you can see in the video, a shape space. This shape space consists of displacements characterizing the shape of, dif of different uh, populations. These were learned from around 2,000 uh, body scans of adults, 
And it has two great uh, properties that we exploit. The first is that it represents the human shape variation in a very low dimensional space. The second one is that it, the mathematical architecture is very simple. So let me now present you the overview of the virtual caliper. Our first goal is to identify real, reliable measurements that the user can perform on its own, on its own body. In the second stage, we make sure that we can replicate these measurements on a virtual body, a 3D mesh with a simple topology. However, due to differences in the body pose while performing these measurements, they, there are discrepancies between the real and the virtual measurements. So we learned regressors to link them. Then, in the last stage with a simple method, giving 3D virtual measurements, we regress to simple shape parameters. At the end, we evaluate the virtual caliper. We conducted qualitative and quantitative experiments to check if we obtain metrically accurate avatars that are also perceptually acceptable. So although I would love to go over all the sections, for the sake of time, I will only present the first step. So for the other sections, I refer you to the paper or we can chat after. So in the first step, the goal was to identify reliable measurements. So what we did is that we defined 30 measurements on the body, four heights, five widths, and four measurements of the arms, and we conducted a user study with 20 participants with gender balance. The measurements were performed using the HTC Vive ones. To assess the accuracy of the measurements, we had two measurers. One was the participant itself, and the other was a trial coordinator. To assess repeatability, each measurement was performed three times. So for each participant, we had 78 measurements. In average, each measurement took around 11 seconds. So with the collected data, we compute the accuracy of the measurements and its repeatability, and from here, we extracted the most accurate and repeatable ones. In addition, we also used the weight of the person, which is a measurement that anybody could easily obtain. So again, this concludes the method, and I refer you to the paper or discussion for more details. Okay, so on the quantitative evaluation, um, what we wanted to evaluate is the avatar surface metric accuracy, the avatar's measurements accuracy, and the robustness to clothing conditions. Today I will just present the two first, surface and measurements accuracy. For comparison, we created two avatars using Make Human. One was creating with two measurements, height and weight, and another using four measurements, height, weight, inseam height, and arm measurements. We also created two avatars with Unite the People. One was created with a picture in a cloth conditions, so or regular cloths that they were wearing, and another with a minimal condition. For reference, we use a 3D untextured body, a scan of the participants. For, to evaluate an avatar metric accuracy, we compute the surface distance between the avatar and the 3D body scan. For the virtual caliper, we created two avatars, one in the self measurements and another with the coordinator measurements. In the bottom row, you, we show heat maps of the errors, red being high error and blue small error. As you can see, the virtual caliper avatars are more accurate than the others. So our avatars are accurate in the surface, but do they really have the measurements that the, we wanted them to have? So we compare the input measurements and the measurements of the obtained avatars. So given a set of measurements, the corresponding virtual avatar has really the exact, exact height, maybe it's 200 grams off, it has the same arm span and in same height. And only the hip width is off in mean by one millimeter. So the virtual caliper really has the measurements that we want him to have. For the quantitative, qualitative experiment, we conducted two perceptual studies. In the first, participants rated the different created avatars on a seven-point Likert scale in terms of similarity to their own body. In the second one, participants ranked the created avatars, most similar to their body first and least similar to their body last. For comparisons, we also use Make Human, Unite the People, and in addition, we used the body visualizer, which is an online tool allowing to generate images and only images of avatars from measurements. So here I won't go into the details, but the general message is that the avatars created with the virtual caliper received higher ratings than the bodies created with Make Human and Unite the People, and the similarity ratings were similar high, similarly high than the ratings of the body scans. 
and similar results for, for the rankings. So let me conclude the method and experiment sections. So we propose a new avatar creation tool, which is fast, accurate, protects privacy, and is freely available and usable by novel users. The main limitations of our work are inherited from the simple body model. As this was learned from the shapes of adults, it does in the US and the Netherlands, it does not really generalize to smaller body, uh, bodies, such as kids, or it does not also generalize to extreme uh, BMI categories. Moreover, in, its, in this work, we did not evaluate the accuracy of the joint locations, which we know is very important for tracking, and we leave this for future work. So in this project, we did a significant engineering effort, so let me present you the release softwares. The first software that we are releasing is the Retra Caliper. It's an HTC Vive app guiding the user with instructional videos to perform 3D measurements. The second software is a desktop app allowing to create a body by entering measurements. The create body can be exported. We also did a VR version where the user can create the body in VR. The last software is a command line tool to generate an FBX file with the rigged avatar. So let me now show you a video of how this works. So in blue here, you see the desktop app. The user will enter the measurements and create a body. So when she's happy, she will click on the export button. And then with the command line tool, these values are exported into an FBX file and imported into a Unity testing environment. Okay, here you go. So now this is the comparison. The avatar now lives in Unity and can be a subject of user studies or any story you want. Now what you see is the VR version of the same tool. The difference is that the created body can be perceived in VR at the same time, and the impact of the different measurements can be experienced in real time and in VR. So we already received several requests for the softwares. So good news is that the web page is online as of Saturday. Okay, sorry. Where is my mouse? So this is the web page. I just wanted to point you out. So you sign in here to download the softwares. You have the main information, authors, the softwares that you presented. And here I wanted to show you the contact. So the virtual caliper can be extended in many ways. For example, different formats. Now we are exporting FBX. If you need another format, just contact us. If you want to add other measurements because for a uh, project you need something, just drop us an email. So that's all. Just thank you for your attention. We have some flyers with the web page and the address. So just contact us. And so Anne Thaler is also around if you want to discuss with her. She's there. Thanks. Okay. Thank Okay, please state your name. Hi, I'm Will from Oculus. Um, really good talk. Thank you very much. Thanks. I was wondering if you do anything with regards to uh, texture, texture mapping, in particular texture stretching, um, and also a secondary question, do you do anything with regards to being able to fit clothes to, to the virtual body? Okay, so in this project, we, from the very beginning, as I showed you with the survey, we excluded images. That being said, now that the avatar is metrically accurate, you could easily reuse one of the image to shape, and now you don't need to optimize for shape, you just need to match the pose, and then you could texture the avatar. So that would be one possibility. And then for the clothes, uh, there are other papers working with clothing, SIGGRAPH papers or CVPR, where you can add clothes or physics simulation. So I would more suggest something like this. Okay, so let's thank our speaker again.